Good morning. This is KHEA Radio 99.5 FM. Right now I have a special treat for everybody in Facebook land, and I'm going to introduce our FM audience here as well. But I have Mr. Joe Perez from Texas Chronicles. He's going to be joining in, talking about everything that's going on in the great state of Texas. If you haven't heard of Texas Chronicles, you're missing out a history, mystery, and adventure. There's so many segments, and you're going to be able to benefit. You've probably seen them. If you if you like if you're coming right now and you're saying I don't think I've ever heard of them you probably have seen some of the videos there's a lot of amazing content and you're going to be able to go check it out as soon as this stream is over uh, here we go hang on good morning this is KHEA Radio 99.5 FM my name is Guardian and I'm going to have uh, Mr Joe Perez from Texas Chronicles History Mystery and Adventure join us right now live from Friendswood Texas where where he lives uh, Joe what's up how are you doing today hey I'm doing great. I'm so glad that I'm able to connect with you guys today. It's been a long time since I've actually seen you guys' faces. Yeah. And I'm, I'm so happy that we're able to connect today. Yeah. Joe, so you live out in Friendswood. Uh, what have you been up to, you know, out there in uh, in the hood, man? That's what I like. I think it's funny to call Friendswood like Friendshood. <laughs> but the hood. What's, what's going on over there in, in Friendswood right now? Man, I have been, I've, I've actually been home for the past, like, two weeks i'm like i always tell people i haven't worn shoes in two weeks um (laughs) so we've been taking the the you know the the stay home quarantine kind of thing kind of serious and and uh you know me and my family except for my wife who has she's an essential uh employee so she has to go out and and do her thing but me and the kids have been been home and it's been a, a good thing but you know we've been kind of just kind of hanging out and spending some time together and um and uh you know but i do miss man being out and about, uh, you know, in the community. Yeah, you work with a ton of different businesses. You've gotten um, probably millions of views on on all of your content. Um, can you kind of let people know what you do, you know, whenever there isn't a lockdown, you know, or suggested people to stay home? What do you normally do? Well, right now, um, you know, we're still um, – I'm doing marketing for a lot of small businesses and everything. And, you know, we're trying to just share, share different, uh, just different things online. But, uh, but um, recently since of yesterday, um, we are, um, we're just interviewing people just to, just to kind of, you know, kind of what you guys are doing and just touching base with people and just letting people know that, Hey, there's hope out there and, and people are still going at it, you know, but um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that we have to wait out and, 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 you know, definitely pray for the best. Yeah. You know, it seems like there's a lot of adapting businesses are doing. Um, have you heard or seen any of the restaurants or even some of the ones that you probably do marketing and work for? Um, how have they tried to adapt or how are they adapting? What have you seen? Well, a lot of times, um, a lot of these restaurants in the past, they've, they've been able to, you know, to do pickup and things like that, but a lot of them have never done curbside service. So it's a, it's a definitely a learning curve, but you know, the thing is, is like, you know, the longer that you don't do it, the, the, you know, the the faster that, you know, you might go under because now people can't have the 50 people come in and eat dinner or or lunch inside of the restaurant. So they have to adapt. And, you know, unfortunately I've seen a lot of them just have to shut down but uh, a lot of those restaurants are, you know, keeping their their employees and and, and getting them paid and and um, you know just going out and and uh, and adapting to what they have to do because you know it's it's mandated by the state now that you can't have anybody come into your your dining area or anything like that. But you know, I, I've seen a lot of people like whiskey cake. That's awesome what they do with, with their little family meals. And I mean, there's a hundred cars packed just to get those things. And, you know, for someone like me who has, I've been cooking for the past two weeks, man, I can't wait to just get, you know, just go and, and get a a meal from some of these restaurants and just be able to just, you know, have something different that I don't have to cook. Yeah. Somebody else needs to cook for a change unless it's already been pre-prepared and all I have to do is put it in the oven. So I saw it's like chicken pot pie. Are you a fan of chicken pot pie? I love chicken pot pie. Man, me too. It doesn't matter. I've I think I've only had it probably at, at some restaurants. I can't remember right now, but mainly like frozen, just from the freezer section, and it's still good, right? So my my wife loves that kind of stuff. So every time I go to the grocery store, she always asks me to bring back chicken pot pie. And I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> but you know, um, a lot of restaurants have have really done an excellent job of 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 just 
figuring out what they have to do in order for them to survive. And a lot of them have, but yeah. you know, it's still, we still have quite a bit to go. So, you know, for anybody listening or watching, you know, if you're going to definitely order out, or if you're going to you know, definitely, you know, have a meal delivered, make sure that it's from a mom and pop place because, you know, these corporate places, they'll survive. They've, they've got money to stay, you know, to, to survive longer than this, but some of these mom and pop places, I mean, they're going day by day. Yeah. And some of them with multiple locations are deciding to leave one open for pickup or, or whatever. Cause I saw, um, and you've done, and we got introduced to them from you, but it's Red Oak Cafe. I think the Leak City location, they had posted something like, Hey, we're going to have our Leak City location open for, for yeah. pickup. Yeah. They're, they're, they're actually today is the first, uh, the first day reopening, um, so, you know, they're, they're offering the curbside service and, and, and I think to go orders too, but man, who doesn't miss having some of their pancakes, you right. know? Yeah. Like a hundred of them in a competition. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. The good old days uh, yeah. back whenever you could just go have a, have a meal somewhere. You know, I've found that there's a lot of things, I guess, you know, just kind of take for granted um, things that that are, are simple, like just going to the grocery store, taking your whole family and just going to eat. But I've been able to, uh, to learn and appreciate, uh, you know, during this time. It's crazy. Some of the things that, you know, you do take for granted, you know, when my, my wife will ask me, Hey, go and get this and get that, you know, realize now that when you have to go, I've got to take, you know, hand sanitizer, I've got to have a, a mask on, you know, I have to have a bottle of Lysol and, when I come in, it takes me longer to disinfect all the groceries that I buy. Mm -hmm. I mean, every single one of them, I have to wipe down with uh, the Clorox wipes because, you know, we, you know, I, we are taking it kind of serious. So it's things that things like that, going to just the grocery store to, you know, or just going to Sonic and getting some drinks and, you know, things like that. It's, it's, it's a, it's a different world we live in right now. And, and hopefully it'll, it'll just kind of pass us by and, and um, it'll, you know, take, take care of itself, but it, it might not. So, yeah. so, you know, this might be something that we have to live with. Yeah. You know, as, as people continue to, uh, to do their part and just social distance and stay home whenever, whenever possible. And, uh, that's, I mean, that's really all we can do. And then just kind of support our, our, uh, doctors and nurses and everybody who works, uh, and has to go out there and do stuff. So, um, that's, that's really what we're kind of, you know, focusing on, on right yeah. now. But Joe, you also, you know, you do a lot of stuff, you know, Texas Chronicles, but you also have another job as, as well. Um, can you kind of, if you feel comfortable, do you want to share about that? Oh, yeah. I, I do the communications for uh, Deer Park ISD. And, you know, we go out and tell stories of what's going on in the classroom and things like that. And right now, that's what I'm doing at home. And it's hard to tell stories of things that are going on in the school when you can't go to the school. So you have to be yeah. kind of creative. And really, it, it's the community that's sending us photos of people, you know, e-learning at home, some of the students and things like that. And, you know, it's not, you know, you don't realize that every single teacher, at, you know, out there is kind of thrust into, into having to teach online, mm -hmm. which is for some of these teachers, this is the first time that they've ever done it. And it's, it's hard for them. And especially when you see your kids every single day, man, you give them hugs and you, you know, they, they talk to you about, you know, what's going on. And it's, you know, it's hard for, especially for any, any, you know, from your principal to your, to your teachers, to the people in the school, not seeing their kids every single day, it's hard. And then, and then having to, to manage, um, you know, e-learning. Um, but, you know, they're, man, they, find so many great ways to just interact with those students and, and be able to keep their, 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 their attitudes hot, you know, just be positive and, and letting them know that, Hey, this is going to, you know, this is going to pass and we'll be able to be, all be together again. Yeah. So have the, the students at Deer Park and the teachers, I mean, are they, are they rolling with it pretty well or about as well as everybody else is? Oh, they're rolling with it very well. Yes. Yeah. What about you? Cause you have, you have kids. Um, have you kind of taken that role and you and your wife helping them learn from home? How's that going? It's good. It's good. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that uh, you're trying to constantly stay busy. And then, so we're, honestly, I'm treating it like, like I'm 
like every day I get up, take a shower, you know, get dressed. And of course I'm not, you know, dressed up or anything, but you know, uh, we have breakfast and then, you know, we might read a book or, you know, color and do those things, do those things. But we try to make it, uh, kind of mirror what a regular school day would be like. And then, and then for lunch, we either take a nap or, or eat lunch. But, you know, we try not to let the situation kind of uh, change our, our, our day to day. So we just try to keep, you know, keep a schedule down and, and, and play a lot outside and, and do those things. But even though they, they know what's going on, you know, around the world, we don't try to, um, to kind of, um, we don't, you know, first of all, we put our faith in, in, in the Lord and, and we let, let them know that, you know, we have nothing to fear if, as long as we're doing what, what we have to do. Um, so really we're just, I mean, we're just living life. We're just, we're just having a good time. And, and uh, I actually, I love spending time with the kids and, and, you know, being Mr. Mom. So. Yeah. Well, I see that cool tent in the background over there. That looks like it's a good time. Yeah, so I actually could fit in there, which is a pretty big tent. So we just go in there, and the, and the dog and the cat comes in, and and we, um, you know, we just hang out and, and read and and do those kind of things. So it's you know, it's for me. I, I know a lot of times uh, parents, some other parents are like, oh, you know, send them back. But you know, I, I really do. I really do love spending time with my kids. Yes. Yeah. Um, I you say so. My my son, he's seven. He does not enjoy doing homework, you know, because they're at school all day. You come home and it's like, here's some more. And even me, I'm like, I don't remember having this much homework, if homework at all, whenever I was seven. But that was a long time ago. Yeah. So now he's like, why do I have so much homework? And I'm trying to had to shift that. It's like, well, it's not homework. It's your schoolwork. You know, we're having to do it at home now and uh, manage, you know, video games and everything else that you want to do and are able to do. But. I think he's enjoying it because he's like, I don't have to go to school. And, yeah. and you know, at our family, too, we're making sure that we don't have any worries or, or weight of anything going on in the world, you know, on them to the best of our ability. But it's still it's still different trying to get him to do schoolwork at yeah. home. But, yeah, we're all rolling with it uh, just as, as well as we can. But so um, are you look, you know, yesterday, I guess you dropped a video. Can you share who was your guest and how can somebody go watch that? What were y'all talking about? Oh, so um, yesterday we interviewed uh, Derek, Darren Clark with Coffee to the Rescue. And one of the reasons why I wanted to, to do that one, uh, to l let him be one of our first uh, guests on, you know, on our stream mm -hmm. was because what he's doing is um, he's taking coffee to first responders, to nurses, to doctors in, in the Bay Area. And what... Um, what he's doing is, you know, he's going out and, 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 and taking coffee. And the cool thing is, is that, you know, when you wake up, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not a big coffee drinker, but I have to have caffeine in the morning. So, um, you know, just imagine these nurses and doctors pulling double shifts and they're tired and, you know, and this coffee helps them, you know, perk up and be able to just get them through these long days, long nights. And he goes and does that. And the money that he receives goes to fighting um, uh, sex trafficking here in Texas. So it's not only are you, are, is your money going towards um, helping these nurses, first responders and doctors, but it's also going to uh, help fighting um, sex traffic in our, in, in our area. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's very cool. I, um, you know, I, I was at the hospital recently because my son was born and you were, you know, we were talking about that a little bit before we went on on the stream here and just being at the hospital and seeing the the measures that I was at ACA Healthcare over there in Webster um, and seeing the precautions they were taking for letting people in and they had kind of shifted it from one level to the next while we were currently at the hospital. So that was an experience in itself. But I was also able to see the doctors and nurses being fed by local restaurants, you know, places were coming and, and dropping off food and having pretty much like food trucks outside and just trying to take care of them. Um, I'm trying to remember one, uh, there was, uh, they're at Baybrook mall and it's the Italian, Italian rest Maggiano's. They're like, oh, Hey, yeah. I'm like in the NICU and there's like Maggiano's just dropped off enough food for all of the, all of the NICU, I guess nurses and the whole thing, but the NICU, they were like, Hey, make sure you go get some. And I was like, man, that's awesome. These, yeah. these restaurants. And I didn't see any of them 
posting that they even did that. You know, maybe they did, which, hey, they should talk about it. You know, more places are, are, are doing that kind of stuff. It's, it's just really cool um, to see, uh, you know, places like your like that guy with the with the coffee and, and Maggiano's and these other places go and feed them. Yeah. I, and, and you don't realize, I mean, when you're before all this, being a nurse or a doctor, you go in and you do your work, man, you know, you do what nurses do, take your, you know, take blood and stuff like that. But going in now, you're going into the, I mean, into a war zone. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, go, I mean, you're, you know, you're kissing your family goodbye. My, my really be goodbye because, you know, going in and it's, it's a, it's a, it's something that you can't see. So you don't know if you're infected or not. And they go in every single day and, and have to, you know, just think about the burden that they have having to, to going into work, thinking that they could get sick and they could bring it home or, you know, they can be infected, but it's, um, it's, it's really hard for them right now. And, and if, you know, if, if donating some coffee or donating a food or meal to, to, to some of these nurses and doctors, man, it's, I think it kind of lessens and maybe not that much, but it could lessen a little bit of the burden and kind of make, you know, maybe have to like feel at home. Yeah. And I've seen some of the people on my friends list who work in the medical field, just saying like, Hey, I have to be kind of quarantined from my family during this time. And, you know, they have, they have a family, you know, like kids and, but they're trying to, you know, stay away or they don't want to, I don't know, just trying to do what's best. It's, it's not easy. It doesn't seem like it'd be easy for anybody. Yeah. It's, it's, it seemed like it'd be hard and, and uh, man, I I pray for them all the time and, you know, just hopefully that they'll be able to go to work and come back and, and uh, you know, not, you know, be infected by this terrible virus. Yes. So uh, Texas Chronicles history, mystery and adventure. Can you tell me a little bit about the start of it and how many videos do you think you've produced over the years for uh, Texas Chronicles? We've done over a hundred videos. Um, we're on our fourth year this year. Um, so the past, um, well, ever since we've done our, our, ever since this virus has shown up, we, we haven't really done any videos. Um, like I said, we're, we're, we're trying to keep safe and, you know, and things like that. But man, I, I cannot wait to go back and start doing those, doing those. And every single day we get about eight, eight or nine different requests to go and, and to do these videos. And yeah, you know, so it's, it's, um, it's, it's something that I, I really do miss, but man, you know, I, I would rather, you know, keep my family safe than, than go out. And, and right now, I think for me, um, since it does take a little bit of planning and uh, on my part and for the restaurants, you know, that's one thing that I don't want to burden, burden them with is like, Oh, having somebody else come in and, and, and shoot, you know, I have to shoot around them or, and because it's, it there, there's enough stress right now for them. And I just, just don't want to burden them. And, and I would rather for, for me, just kind of, um, uh, just kind of support them from, from afar, whether it's sharing some of their specials or sharing, uh, one of their posts and things like that, and, or just letting people, Hey, you know, you know, Angelo's has a great meal, whatever, whatever, and just letting other people know that, that this is what they're doing. But yeah, it's just, you know, and I had cancer before and, you know, and so I don't know if, you know, I just, and I'm older. I mean, you know, I'm not like the ripe age of Guardy. Like, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm like a little bit older too. And, you know, I have to just look out for, for my health and for my family's health. So. Yeah. But, but once all this is over, man, I cannot wait to get back and get into the community and, and just tell those stories. And the cool thing about it is like, this kind of gives you a month of like planning. Brainstorming. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got like this big notebook of all these things and, you know, and, and, and things that I've, I haven't taken care of, like our, our, our home studio, it's, it's been a year now since, you know, since we wanted to go do something with it, but now I can do that. But yeah, I mean, that's, but we'll be back. We'll be back, you know, telling those stories. Are you, are you making a list? Is there a list of places like, Hey, this is going to be the, fir- you know, I'm sure if you get like eight inquiries, you know, a day, and I'm sure you get a, you know, a lot like, okay, I definitely need to check out these places and whenever we're able to go back out. Yeah. So a lot of the places that we're going to do. So what I do now is, is when I'm going through Facebook and I'm seeing like these businesses that are going the extra mile and helping, whether it's, it's EMSs or, you know, hospitals or, or just kind of going out of their way to, to help others. Those are the ones that I'm going to focus on first, because 
I feel like after all this is over, you've got to start from the, from ground from the ground level. I mean, you know, it's you're starting over again, and I I think those companies or those businesses are the ones that really will need that push. And the, I, I mean, we already have a list of those of the of those uh, uh, businesses that we're going to visit, because I mean, you know, it's you, you want to not only are they going to be blessed, but we want to be able to also bless them and you know and getting their their um you know getting their product out there or getting uh, their message yeah hey here's a comment i had to read this is from uh, enrique over at, at benito's he, he said good morning guys i love uh joe i love your show and everything that you do and then he said i wanted to donate some food to the nurses and doctors does anybody have a contact at mainland yeah enrique i will get that to you i can get you the contact of someone and um so you can go and and do that if you'd like but that's that's really cool and and i'm sure they will appreciate that you know, as well, but Joe, yeah, have, and, have and you been Rike, to Benito's you know, yet? Well, I've been, I've been meaning to go, but one of the things I love about Enrique, I, yeah. I see his posts every single day and, and I see him posting and it's always so positive and it's always like, Hey guys, come in. And, you know, I, we just haven't been able to make it down there, but I mean, but of course we're going to make it. And, and he's one of the people that I, I definitely want to spotlight, but because he's so, He's so in tune with the community and he's so he's so happy when people come in. He takes photos with them and he posts, you know, it's always so positive. And that's one thing that I just love. I love him being so positive in a day and age where there's, you know, the, the, everybody's so uneasy about things. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunity to be very negative. But, man, they've, Benito's has been there. I think like 50 years. It's so it's so cool uh, just hearing the stories of people that grew up in, in Lamarck and around saying like, hey, my my parents, you know, went there or my grandparents went there. And and now you can still go or actually do pickup today. I was I had messaged them. I was like, hey, do you all have like a family thing for some enchiladas? And I because I've been craving some some uh, Mexican food and yeah, they got they got the some of the best enchiladas around like cheese enchiladas. No joke. Well, uh, maybe well, Benito's. I, I look at their photos and my wife's like, those are the cheese enchiladas I like. <laughs> so, so she's been, and actually um, she's right now she's, she's in like the Texas city area. So she asked me the other day, she's like, I'm going to go by there. I'm like, you better not go without me. So. <laughs> bring me, bring me some. She's probably going to yeah. be hiding from you. <laughs> yeah. Joe, Hey, is there anything else you'd like to share? Remind people how to, to go uh, check out, everything you do at Texas Chronicles? Yeah. So just, uh, you know, if you're on Facebook, go to Texas Chronicles um, and just check out some of the things that we're doing. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're definitely, um, we're trying to spotlight some of those businesses just through Facebook shares and things like that. But, uh, you know, I think after this whole thing is lifted, we'll be back and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll come back and we'll start telling those stories again. But, um, you know, honestly, this is going to pass and uh you know just th there's hope out there and uh, i think once you hold on to that i think that uh, everything's going to be okay i agree right now it's 10:51 this is KHEA radio 99.5 fm all right hey we're just on facebook now and i'm trying to get the hang of this cuz um <laughs> yesterday i didn't i had jennifer fuller in studio and i accidentally left our mics on on the fm <laughs> But um, I think we're we're off the FM now, and so now we're just on, on Facebook. Oh, okay. For a bit. For a little bit. Um, yeah, just for a little bit, and then. Just... Okay, so tell me, cause, tell me how how how, how, how your life is right now. Not only dealing with everything, but like getting no sleep at night. Yeah, you know. So my son, he was in he was in the NICU for about two weeks, and man, that was. It was terrible, and that's whenever things were kind of starting to change or get serious because the hospital went from, like, one level of security lockdown to the next level security of lockdown. So that kind of helped um, put my life into perspective as far as being grateful and, like, okay, take a deep breath of what's going on um, because, like, I was, I was spending, like, 10 – plus hours 10 to 15 hours of my day was at the hospital but it was just me and so my wife she wasn't able to go just because of the procedure that she went through she was able to go one time a day 
but they were only allowing one guest uh, for kids in the NICU in at a time, right? Yeah. Um, and so if I was there, she almost felt better if I was there just knowing that someone was there, and our son's name is Luca. Someone was there with Luca oh. than if um, nobody, you know, obviously yeah. no one was there. So I would I would go get up super early, go there, and then whenever she would call me and be like, hey, come get me. So I'd turn back around, go pick her up, uh, let her grow up there, and then I would just go sit in the parking lot, like in the car, and then she would be there for probably about two hours, hour and a half, or however long, and then I'd, you know, I couldn't go up and get her. She would have to come, you know, work her way down, and then I would take her home, eat, and uh, drop her up at home, eat, and then kind of go back and sit up there again till I couldn't, uh, yeah, it was, man, it was tough. So after dealing with that for about two weeks, just getting home was like the best, the best thing, you know, yeah. ever. And so I was just like, wow, this is great. But with him being in the NICU, his schedule, as far as like eating and sleeping, like he's a champ because there are so many babies in there and a lot of them aren't happy. The lights are on. There's a lot of stuff. So for him, like he can sleep through anything at this point. And sometimes you almost even have to wake him up to feed him. It's like, Hey, it's time for wow. you to eat. So he's, Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's been, it's been good. It's been good, but he's, uh, he's adjusted and he's doing great. He's doing so good, you know, right now. Man, and we're I'm very so thankful happy to hear that. Yes. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. But, um, it made me appreciate, you know, all the, the nurses and doctors and, the NICU, uh, I was talking to, um, her name's Marsha, but she's like ACA uh, Houston's communications media person. And I was like, man, I would love to talk to somebody from, from the NICU department. I know they got a lot of stuff going on, but um, we've, we've had them on studio a couple times before, and I'm hoping to have some people on a, uh, again to, just to kind of to spotlight and if people want to support them, just ideas and stuff. But I know they're busy, yeah. so I was just like, well, whenever y'all have time, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nothing else I going know. on. <laughs> And yeah. that's the thing. It's like, you know, you see the kind of things that they do and, you, you know, you want to spotlight them. You want to let people know the kind of things that they're doing because, man, it's, yeah, it's, I, I couldn't imagine. I mean, I can't even imagine, you know, kind of wh what what you went through, you know, having to, having to do, you know, play dad and then, your, you know, husband and then, and then, you know, having to kind of be careful what you're doing because yeah. of the, all the stuff going on. Oh man. Yeah. That was, it was like a movie, you know, like in a, uh, on my Snapchat, <laughs> I was doing some of the stuff cause they made everybody go through the ER. So I'd literally see people that were sick and coughing no. and getting, to, yeah, they would make you go through the, the ER, but it w went through phases like where you didn't have to go through the, then they, and I'm, you know, there's reasons and they're very, you know, secure. And I've been, I'm very happy with the way ACA, uh, handled everything. Um, but um, it just went through phases, and I was like, I wonder if this is the best way. And then, like, as it kind of rolled out, I was just, you know, making sure I'm, I'm as careful as can be. Like, but it seemed oh. like a mo like movie stuff. Like, I'm yeah. leaving at, like, 1, 8, 1 a.m., like, 1.30 in the morning, and, and there's people. But they, they stopped making them wait in the waiting room, and they had them go in their cars. Like, hey, get away from the door. You know, go oh, out to your wow. car so you're not just, like, congregating around here. And then they have them, like, blocked off and... Um, and you, and you yeah. go outside and it's like quiet and like, there's no, yes. there's no one outside, you know? So yeah, I could see where that would be like a movie. And then when you get there, having to go from the door to where you're, where you have to go and, oh, yeah. and Cause just I, know that there's people coughing and everything. Cause I had to park on one side cause they let you in the entrance. And then like after it was like seven o'clock or so they made you go through another one and then it was the ER. Then they, somebody was like, Hey, there's another door, right? You know, like a at the movies how there's like an emergency exit yes. like in the movie so like there's like a side door i'm like where does this even exit so i saw they had the er blocked off and i was like oh okay over here but i still had to walk like all the way around the hospital oh. to you know so it seemed like, yeah, like there's nothing going on it's super super late at night and like foggy and everything <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it kind of amused me a little bit i was like man just like looking oh, around like i'm gonna like you never know <laughs> what's going on no. yeah yeah Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> I don't know how you, I don't know how you did that. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Cause you know, the other day I actually got my, no, I think what was, it? no, it was like, um, no, my wife asked me to go with her to, it was like out to, to Sonic and get a drink. Mm -hmm. She, she loves their ice. We're, so uh, we went and it was so creepy because it was like eight <laughs> o'clock and we were, 
go in to get some some a drink and there was like nobody on the road yeah and it, and it does feel like a horror movie you know because it's like you're the only one out there it's it's just it, it's a it's a very eerie feeling yeah it's a definitely an adjustment but i'm excited for whenever you know things start to <laughs> to bounce back and um you know it'll it'll happen they'll bring basketball back oh you know but Something. they're thinking about actually doing uh they're actually thinking about doing a, a horse game, a televised professional horse game or, you know, like, you know, let's you go know, like horse, <laughs> you know, it's better than nothing. I, I put it on ESPN the other day, uh, actually yesterday, I guess, just because I was like, what are they talking about on here? I'm taking a break from cartoons you know, that my kids watch 24 hours a day. I'm putting it on sports center and they're talking about like old you know, the 19, uh, you know, the 1900 bears, you know, Chicago bears won the championship and all this, whatever. It's just interesting because they don't have anything new to talk about other than, you know, uh, we may come back hopefully, or hopefully we'll play horse. We'll take it. Uh, well, no, they've been like, I mean, they, yeah, they've been playing the, uh, those old classic games, but yeah. I mean, uh, is there going to be a football season? I mean, is there going to be a basketball season? I mean, yeah. I mean, next year, I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I saw that the NBA from their social media was streaming an NBA 2K, which is the video game, 2K20 tournament between players on their NBA uh, oh, Facebook page, okay. which is, I was, I caught myself watching an entire game. <laughs> I was like, this is entertaining. Well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that's, that's pretty, you know, what, and plus the, like the Olympics is, is coming up, uh, the Olympics are coming up. I wonder what, if. I think if, I saw they I, postponed it to next year was the idea. Oh, Oh, did they? I okay. think I saw that, but um, yeah, that's nuts. And I guess it's it's not unprecedented because I think they've canceled some years before just because of, but it was like world wars and stuff like that, which is crazy to to you know look back in history and this you know how is this going to be viewed, you know that you we're know, living the, through the, it right now. And the, yeah, and the thing is, is that well, well, I, well I'm not gonna I'm not gonna age you, but like even during 9/11, after you know, um, a couple of weeks after, you know, they were still playing sports. I mean, it's, I know it's a different, it's a different, you know, it's a, it's a different thing, mm -hmm. but you know, a, a lot of those sporting games brought everybody together. Do you remember during hurricane, um, uh, during Harvey, you know, the Astros were in the playoffs and yeah, sports, sports. I mean, it's I, like I said, it's, it's, it's different from what we're dealing with now, but sports brought everybody together. I mean, I, re I remember people that were cheering for the Astros in their destroyed homes and, uh, you know, people were rebuilding and, you know, everybody got to, to kind of rally around the Astros, you know, um, and, and, and a lot of people were in bad shape still. Mm -hmm. So there's Dana White with the UFC in it, MMA. Um, mm -hmm. He reportedly is buying an island oh. So that way they can still have it's like UFC 249 or something like that. They've canceled what? like two events, and I'm kind of like, hey, let, that's kind of a good idea. Like, who doesn't want an who doesn't want an island? And then I saw a meme about it talking about like Mortal Kombat. Like, what could possibly go wrong? You know, buy an island, have the ultimate fighting championship in the middle of nowhere. But that would be the first. Like everything else has been canceled. You know, that would be the first like major sport, um, you know, league or whatever. They'd kind of said, hey, we can try and do something different uh, and make, make hey, an event happen they should do remember in dodgeball they had the ocho yeah <laughs> yeah they should do that they should bring something like that and then have like competitive sports of people doing stuff that's ridiculous you yeah know what i mean like but they should i don't know because yeah i i miss it too i, I miss you know i miss hanging out and you know watching whether it's basketball or i mean i mean what has Baseball season started already? Well, it was supposed to. It was supposed to have yeah, had. Right? They were. They had like the spring training, and then I saw. Actually, I saw something this morning saying that they, the ML, MLB, and like the players' association was like meeting, and they're they're trying to brainstorm or have a way to salvage the season. And I don't know. I don't know what it is or or how. But hey, you know, people get paid a lot of money and to uh, to figure that out. But that'd be cool. You know, it, it would bring people together during this time yeah. instead of just like bickering and arguing. Cause I've seen a, a lot of that on social media about like, who's right, who's wrong. You're not, you're not following the directions close enough or, you know, it's just, there's just a lot of it. And it would yeah. be nice to have a distraction that, that is something I had thought about. Like, yeah, sports during everything else has kind of helped 
bring us together or at least give a, a needed distraction. And right now, everything is canceled. Other than like Disney Plus releasing Onward. Onward, which <laughs> that was I've nice. seen it like three times since Friday. Frozen 2. Like, yeah. thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Disney. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I know. I know. Oh, and, man. It's, and it's it's hard. But yeah, I mean, it, it would be great if something other than like you know, Tiger King will would be able to distract everybody. <laughs> oh, but, Tiger King. Yeah, that was a it's a good distraction though. It's, it's hilarious. But people people are wanting stuff like that. People want to, you know, we want to be able to focus on something else and than just reading the you know, uh listening to the news or you're watching it because it, it just adds so much stress to to what you're doing now. So Yeah. So I know we were on like a forty minute time limit due to our current yeah. restrictions i was going back and checking it i think we've been on close but joe thank you for for taking the time and hanging out today i appreciate you hey thank you for so much for having me on and i love you guys and uh you know i and just i'll be praying for you and your family thank and, you. and and for everybody else and just hopefully that we'll we'll be able to to meet again but in person i love it i'm ready for it if you're watching right. on social media thank you for taking the time hey let me know what you got going on today and then also feel free to share this out or if you have any questions for joe or suggestions where he should maybe go whenever things are back to to normal uh feel free to weigh in on that this is kga radio 99.5 fm